All right. So um, I promised Mandy we would get started at 5.05 because she's got a lot of content to cover. So um, I'm Shauna Dorsey. And in the, I don't know where Nick is on your shirt on. If you can wave, Nick, excuse me. Hello. <laughs> so Nick and I uh, started this group about four years, I don't know, four or five years ago now um, at a flywheel grilled cheese party because uh, we were talking about how there was a beer and code, but not a wine and code. And I'm like, we need to make that happen. And so Nick was game. And here we are four years later, <laughs> now doing Zoom meetups in a pandemic. So, you know, it's all good. Who knew? <laughs> we just make it work. <laughs> um, but we're, we're grateful to have Mandy. So Mandy was scheduled to present in March at uh, the Empire Room in Midtown Crossing. It's a beautiful space. So hopefully we can present, have a Mandy come back at that when they open back up. But she was flexible enough and open enough to try a Zoom session with us. So we're excited to hear from her. Um, but before we get to that, Nick, do you have any words? And then I'll pop over to Todd and Jennifer. And that's kind of the plan. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think I have anything. Uh, I think you covered it, and um, I, I can't think of what's going on right now in, in the pandemic. Everything's canceled right now, so I'm happy that this is happening because it's some normalcy, and thank you, everyone, for, for coming. Thank you, guys. Yeah. And so I think your kitchen's on fire, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Shauna background. I just got that. I was like, uh, whatever. I need that, actually, so uh, I'll be looking for that later. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I want to definitely thank uh, Todd Kirk of the Paragon team in Des Moines for sponsoring this event and for donating to Bricklayer. So Todd, if you would say a few words about Paragon, like what you're up to and what you're doing in Omaha. No, I appreciate it. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be a part of it too. And if it's good with everybody else, maybe we should start a tequila in code once this is all done. I'm <laughs> Margarita and code. Yeah, I'm just saying. Um, yeah, Sean only gave me a half an hour, so uh, I'll be quick. Um, but yeah, Par so Paragon, a little bit about me and Paragon. I'm born and raised here in Des Moines, Iowa. You're looking at the back of my house. Uh, lucky enough to marry my high school sweetheart. I got three boys under the age of 19. And so that's why I do what I do, obviously. But I got into this IT world 10 years ago knowing nothing. Uh, realizing that a lot of people that I did know that I had connected with, that's what a project manager was. So uh, travel back five years, I started with Paragon in Des Moines, uh, the two owners and I, we all grew up together. So I've known them for my entire life. Uh, Paragon's been in existence for 23 years. Um, we are kind of that small company with high integrity, high values. Uh, is the way I like to put it, you know, we're big, big, big on relationships, getting to know people, taking care of our consultants. And uh, we work specifically in IT in terms of contract full-time, uh, contract to hire. We do projects. Uh, we've got partners across the world. So we're kind of that little engine that could. You may have never heard of us, uh, but I started coming to Omaha about three and a half years ago, picked up a client and have uh, kind of grown our business since then and really I'm not looking to take Omaha over. I think we're looking to have a nice, good group of clients that make sense, that kind of do the right thing. And uh, the success that we've had in a short amount of time has been phenomenal. Uh, our team is as big as two now, which is very nice. And uh, we're planning to grow. We're going to grow a little bit sooner if it weren't for all that's happened. So I hope everybody on here is safe, happy, and healthy. And, and I look forward. I, I come over to Omaha every week, or at least used to. And uh, I'm getting tired of staying here in Des Moines. I'm almost, uh, almost a Nebraskan at this point. But if I can ever help, find me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm not a high-pressure salesperson. I'm 50. I'm terrible cold calling. So if I called you or left you a message or tried to call you, I promise uh, I'll be quick and to the point. But we just try to do things the right way and, and help people, uh, help companies connect people and people connect to companies. And I really love Bricklayer. What a cool organization something that was started in Nebraska at the University of Nebraska and it's in the family. Um, and, you know, Sean, are you connecting me to that and wine and code? I'm just very thankful and uh, appreciate the time to be able to talk a little bit about myself and Paragon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And I do want to say one quick thing about Paragon. So a few years ago, um, <clears throat> Todd and Craig Jackman, one of the co-founders of Paragon, were open to me coming to Des Moines 
at the time, I was like, you know, I think we could open a school in Des Moines. And we should start off with this free intro to coding session at Paragon in your office in one of your big conference rooms. And they let us do that. So uh, just thank you for always being open to trying things out with us and with the community and people you've never met before, <laughs> you know. So thanks again. Uh, Jennifer, will you tell us a bit about Bricklayer, please? Yeah. So my husband is a, he used to work at Sandia National Labs in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And so um, he really wanted to go into academia. So we got married and moved to Omaha and um, he was looking for a more interesting way to teach computer science rather than just the standard hello world and five plus two is seven kind of he didn't feel like it was engaging students. So he actually created Bricklayer out of that um, sort of a piece that he saw missing. And then as he developed it, he would run stuff by myself and my daughter, who was eight and a half at the time. And I, I was doing Sudoku puzzles, so my brain didn't melt with two young children. And I really liked it. Like, it was really cool. And we saw that our daughter really was she was just on top of it and we were like what is going on so we that kind of spun off into a coding club around our dining room table which then led to a coding club at a local elementary school which then led to d the development of the nonprofit and um, so over the years we've done a variety of different levels but literally as early as first and second grade low level stuff all the way through university and for the last I guess two years we've really focused on helping teachers who are really taking the reins and using bricklayer in math in art in technology in a variety of different ways in their classrooms and that's self-directed and so in the pandemic and it's a it's a robust computer science curriculum like it's as challenging as 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 any curriculum can be and then when the pandemic happened we were like okay teachers and schools and students and families juggling children and all the craziness going on um we then developed a learncsathome.com which is um, a guided bricklayer class that uh, Victor put together over the course of about six weeks. And so we have that available now too. Um, so it, it's been our blood, sweat and tears and our passion. So I appreciate the support and um, it's given me the opportunity to meet people like Shauna and um, we really appreciate it. And we use a local web developer. We host with Flywheel. Um, we really try to keep it where we're supporting the community that supports us. So I appreciate all of you being here. So thanks for that. Thank you so much, Jennifer. And um, Thank you. if you haven't already on the registration form for this uh, meetup, there is a link to reg I'm sorry, to donate directly to Bricklayer. And I'll send that out again because I'm one of those people and I don't care. And that's how it should be. I love supporting <laughs> my local uh, tech organization. So thank you so much for all that you do. And I'm going to turn it over to Mandy. So Mandy Kubitschek, you guys have read her bio on uh, Meetup, I hope. And if not, just know that she is a former, and if I get this wrong, I'm reading it, I'm remembering it and not reading it um, in front of me. So. I'm going to say it too. So you can just say how amazing I am if you want. No, I want to like, <laughs> I like to challenge myself, challenge my memory. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But Mandy worked for Boeing and Flywheel. She went to the Rake School and a pretty prestigious school in Illinois. I'm drawing a blank on the name right now. But amazing career in um, engineering and then moved on to becoming a life coach. And I'm sure she'll tell you more about the, the journey from uh, tech to where she is now. Um, but we're so grateful that you're here today. And thanks so much for sharing your expertise with us today. Thank you so much. That was brilliant. Um, it was St. Louis. Everything else was like spot on. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to share my screen. And then I'm going to remember how to do all the other things. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yes, okay, awesome. Momentito. 
I've been practicing Spanish. Have you guys used Duolingo? It's the best. Great. It's a great little app. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much for being here. Um, I always have this reminder in here. This is for you. Get rid of your distractions if you need to. Let this, let this hour count. I just wanted to share a couple of Zoom tips before we jump in, in case um, I know a lot of us spend all day on Zoom, but just in case. If you're on your phone, you probably have to tap your screen to see the buttons along the bottom. And then on the left are your audio and video controls. So by default, you're muted. And we're gonna stay that way just for the beginning and do a lot of interaction over chat. I encourage you to share your video if you aren't already so we can see your gorgeous faces. If your name is showing up funny, you can go down to participants, find your name and right click and rename. So if you're showing as like iPhone, you can have it be your actual name. Here's the chat, which I encourage you to use profusely. Um, there's a little drop down. You want to make sure that it says everyone, unless you're sending a message. And then there's this reactions, which is a relatively new feature. So if you um, don't have your thing all full screen, if you can see that button, let's give a shout out. Let's let's clap for Wine and Code, Shauna and Nick and Parent IT and Bricklayer, all of our awesome sponsors. Yeah. Hey, uh, Mandy, quick question for you, or just yeah. want to say this too. If you happen to have like a beverage in front of you that is not soda or water that you want to be drinking right now on this Zoom call, you're more than welcome to. It is called Wine and Coke, so it's all good. Yes. <laughs> Mine's just water, but. Yeah. <laughs> so nice, Nick. You're fine. Share your video, drink your drink. It's fine. Cheers. And we are recording, I think I forgot to mention that too, so. Yeah, so what I wanna do to start off with is I just have a two question poll. Um, so first I'm gonna figure out where that button went. Okay. So you should have a poll that just popped up on your screen. These are just two questions. This is anonymous, so when we see the results, we're gonna see how many people replied to each one, but we won't see your name, just to give me a sense of kind of where you are, um, what you're looking for in your life. By the way, this is super cool, and I'm gonna have to call you after this to learn how you're doing what you're doing. It's like magic. <laughs> yeah, these polls are fun. Um, okay, we're at 100%. So let me share these results. So all over the board, um, kind of in the middle, most of us for satisfaction with our work life and people want everything. They especially want clarity. I feel I, I run into it a lot, especially in our field. I think a lot of us want to have this like three year delineated plan and know all the details. We love to take assessments. We love our Myers-Briggs and Gallup and all that. So yeah, purpose, freedom and fun are also up there on the list. Awesome, so this is for you, wherever you are. If you're pretty much loving your job and you just wanna kind of level up, the stuff we're talking about applies to you. If you're really unhappy and you're in a low place, this stuff applies to you. So I'm gonna push this button. Okay, figured out the poll, this is great. So as Shauna said, I'm Mandy Kubitschek. I'm a certified life coach. I specialize in helping high achieving women love their work because I came from that. I tend towards overachievement. Um, so I get that world. I spent 12 years in the software industry um, and it was good. I was good at it, but it wasn't great, right? It wasn't, I didn't feel like it was it. It wasn't my passion. And so the things that we're going to be exploring tonight are really how I made that transition. So I love talking about this stuff. Um, yeah and now i have like i said it was fine before i worked at a lot of great companies but i i have a lot of that flexibility and freedom and sense of purpose and excitement that i didn't quite have in the software world so here's what's going to happen for the rest of this time um first of all it's important that you know that i don't see myself as a sage on the stage this is a fun experience because there's a bunch of us in the room to learn from each other. So I encourage you, especially if you're feeling nervous about it, to lean out of your comfort zone and use that chat 
if I say something and it makes you think of a story, experience, a question, whatever it is, use that chat so that we can interact through this. So the next 20 or so minutes will be, um, I'm gonna share some things with you. It'll be this workshop style. You can interact through the chat and you're gonna learn a few things. You're gonna learn how to clarify in really just a few words what makes a career meaningful to you. You're gonna um, come up with some clear action steps so you can get more of what you want right away, especially for those of you who feel like you need to make a big change. We're gonna talk about easy steps you can take before making some kind of dramatic move. And then you're gonna learn really the root cause of your career resistance. After that, we're gonna do about 10 minutes of small group discussion. So we're gonna use breakout rooms, another cool Zoom feature. And that's really for you. That's like, um, you know, if you're stuck on something and you want help working through something, whatever, however you wanna use that time, that's for you to dive a little deeper into the things that we just discussed. And then we'll come back together, do some wrap up and Q&A. And if you find that you really love this stuff and you like, you wanna go a little bit deeper, um, I just wanna let you know that I'm not gonna leave you hanging. Before we wrap up, I'll let you know how we can keep this conversation going. So what we're talking about tonight is an agile approach. So, um, oh good, we even have a comment already. Head over to chat and let me know, what do you think of when I say agile? What is agile to you? Yeah, and I was on mute. I didn't uh, take my own cue about looking at that. Uh, but <laughs> what is career resistance from Christian Burke, as you can see in there? <clears throat> yeah, so to me, career resistance, when I say that, I mean, um, basically for any fear you have about making a change. So maybe it's, um, what's an example? I'm nervous about, you know, I launched an e-course recently and the, I, the res, I had resistance in not wanting to do it at first because it was scary and different. Some people have resistance by that. I'm like, they're pretty happy with their job. They think they could do something more exciting, but for some reason they're just not doing it. They're not sure what it is or they're, they're just not using the action. Any of that is what I call resistance. So we're gonna talk about the root cause of all of your resistance, which is really the root cause of all of your fear and dare I say, all of your suffering. Does that answer your question, Christian? Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay, so agile, flexible, teamwork, Observe, orient, decide, act, repeat. Yeah, I love that. A software development methodology. And with a lowercase, it means you're able to adapt to change easily. Yes, all of this. So here's why I ask you this. Um, basically, I saw a parallel between what I was doing in the software world, the way that we were learning how to build software more effectively, which is all the things you guys have said, and the way that we do life coaching because the only constant in life is change, right? And things change so quickly that the way that we go about building software is also the way we can go about be building our ideal life. And so with that, I created the Love Monday method. And we're just going to basically just step into each one of these three steps and iterate and refactor and just learn about them at a glance. Um, yeah, and, and the idea is, just like with Agile, you cycle through these, like Agile, like Christian said, repeat. You do a little bit of planning, a little bit of iterating, a little bit of refactoring, and then you just keep cycling through this. Um, which is important because, like I was saying before, I think a lot of us feel like I need to have the whole picture and then I will act. Um, so I'll just check on chat, nothing else going on. Okay, does anybody have any questions or anything before I jump into plan? Will you make yourself available? Yeah, I can totally do that. We're also doing a recording, so I may be able to do that, make that available. Okay, 
step one plan. So here's another chat question, guys. I want to know, have you ever been asked to do something and you weren't given the context? Like your boss wanted a report or somebody wanted to drop down to be added to the search criteria and they didn't really tell you why, they just told you to do it. So if you can think of a time that that's happened to you, I want you to share in the chat, how did it make you feel? What was that experience like to be asked to do something without having that deeper context and understanding of why you were being asked to do it? Uncertain, yeah, what else? <laughs> Blowing up at your boss's boss. I'm sure that was lovely. Stuck, not sure where to start, stressful. Anxious, nice. Ask for more info, plan. Some, so in, in general, even if you are more comfortable with it, sounds like you guys are, it's something that you have to get used to. You have to learn how to deal with. Frustrated. So my hunch, guys, is that you are doing this to yourself. So the first step of the Love Monday method is about making sure you're focused on the right problem before you jump into the solution. And this starts with redefining success in terms of how you feel. I know we don't always talk about feelings and emotions, but it's like my favorite topic, maybe second topic after what we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and Danielle Laporte says, you're not chasing the goal itself, you're chasing the feelings that you hope attaining those goals will give you. So what we're talking about with career development, you're gonna have outcome-based goals, like you might want to be a CIO or you might want to be a, a product manager at Flywheel or whatever that, that tangible outcome-based goal is. But what you want to do is just get to the root of that. Ask yourself, what is the feeling that I hope attaining that goal will give me? And there's a lot of reasons to do that. Um, but a big one is that sense that you're in control. If you focus on the feeling, there's so many factors that go into getting a certain position or whatever your goal is. Um, but you really can control whether or not you feel impactful or you feel valuable or, or whatever that feeling is that you're after, yeah? And so a quick example of this is um, when I first started, when I went full-time to, to build my coaching business, I was hyper-focused on revenue. So any day that a client didn't buy coaching from me, I was disappointed. And I was just setting myself up for failure, right? Because people aren't gonna buy coaching every day, every minute, every second of the day. And so I redefine my success in terms of how I want to feel. And I want to feel present, connected, playful. And then that puts the control back into my core. So I could do something like go get coffee with Shauna and feel really connected and have a meaningful conversation. That was within my control. So, oh yeah. And um, I actually have this fun workbook. I just, I just launched this yesterday that goes through helping you clarify what those three to five words are for you that define success for you that really mean make up a meaningful career. Um, and if you want to get that, you can go to my website, coachkubacheck.com, and right on the home page there is a sign up to, to download that workbook. So back to chat. As you think about this, I want you to think about a big career goal. And not something that's like on your quarterly plan, but some really big ambitious career goal you have, if you're willing to share that with us, and I hope you are, um, I'd love to see what that is in the chat and go a step deeper. How do you hope attaining that goal will make you feel? What is your big career goal? And it doesn't have to be, um, you know, something you're absolutely committed to do. It's something you have in mind. And how do you think it'll make you feel? I will tell you one of mine. I, I have been working on my memoir for a while and it's getting closer. One of my big goals is, I don't even know why, but I just fantasize about going on a, like a book tour around the country and having my husband with me and, um, I still have so much to think. I don't know how I'm gonna publish it or any of that, but I have this fantasy about a book tour, which will make me feel 
um, excited and I think challenged because there'd be so many things to figure out. I really like that, that part of the project. All right, guys, what are your goals? I know you have goals. I know you have dreams. <laughs> Christian, you know I cannot tell you your goals. You have the wisdom within you. Consistency in production. I sprint and work really hard, then need to step back. Accomplished and successful. A full-time IT position. It'll make me feel more connected and accomplished. Beautiful. We will start a new company with win for me, win for my customers, win for whatever third party is that part of it. Business often seems like win-lose, but I know that this is possible. Nice. How will that make you feel, Shauna? Great point, Nick. Talk to you the other day. I love the idea of everybody getting something out of a transaction. It'll make me feel great. Like we're all winning. So nice. What's an emotion word for that? Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of it. Like how would, how would I feel about that? Um, happy is a word, but I know that's momentary, but I kind of feel like that moment of happiness is, is important. It, it, it's motivating. I don't, I don't really know. Motivated? <laughs> Motivated, yeah. Excited. Can you think of where you would feel it in your body? I feel it in my heart and stomach. Cool. That's, the physical sensations can be even more important than the words we apply mm -hmm. to the emotion. Ooh, Christian came up with an answer. Make technology that fixes online learning so everyone gets the best education for them. How would that make you feel, Christian? Same question for Krista. Probably like I changed the world. And so... What is that Steve Jobs quote that you make a ding in the universe, something like that? So like you actually affected things for the better. So very How's that feel? satisfying. Satisfying, yeah. Cool. So step two. This one is all about taking small iterative action, just like we do when we build software and we want to launch it right so we can get some real world feedback, this is the same idea. Consistently take easy action. Easy, imperfect action, of course. So once you've started to identify the feelings associated with the goals, you can come up with easy steps to feel those things now. Barbara Sher says, action is absolutely essential for people who don't know what they want. I love when I read this, it felt like permission almost to take action and not have to know everything beforehand. I also love this picture of a pig. Ah, um, this is, while we're talking about, we talked about organizations earlier, I support the Humane League and that's what this cute picture of a pig is for. Um, that's all I'll say about that. I don't want to be the crazy vegan that talks about veganism every time she gives a presentation. Just kidding, I already am. Um, so this is so important because um, taking action leads to clarity and confidence, just like Barbara, Barbara said. And my little story for this um, is a few years ago, I was spending all my free time in my craft room and I was really having fun. And I wanted to feel more creative and I wanted to feel entrepreneurial. I wanted to see what it was like to have an Etsy shop and actually sell my stuff. So I did that and I learned a ton. I learned that I love designing new products. I love that early stage of a product. And I loved the branding. I came up with Color Riot, Revolt Against the Common Gift. And I still love it. And I really did not like building things in bulk. It's like the same thing I love about software. You build software and then you could serve thousands of people. I hated building like, you know, I perfected my dog bow and then I had to make 50 of them. And I didn't like, um, 
sitting in a craft show for like eight hours and making small talk with people. So, um, yeah, I learned a lot about what I like and didn't like, and really I'm even applying it now in my current business. I'm not doing events that require me to sit somewhere for four hours at a time. So back to chat, I want you to think of an easy step you could take right now within like the next 24 hours to feel a little more the way you want to feel at work. And if you're in a place like Nick, that's, and you're having a hard time seeing past day to day, that is the perfect place to be too. Like if, if what you're wanting to feel maybe is a little bit more sense of peace or security or calm, how can you create a little bit more, even 1% more of that feeling in your life? And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be something new that you're doing towards a work goal. It can be, um, well, you could come up with things. Like uh, some clients I'm working with, they're starting with the same thing. So it's like um, creating a routine to have a cup of tea before bed because they're having trouble sleeping. It can be simple things like that. So let's see here some easy steps. Right out a list of goals, great. What did Sean say? Take easy action, reminds me of the spirit of Kaizen and that that's one small thing I can do. Yeah. I like that focusing on the single most important thing to do that day. I feel like that's a, uh, I think a lot of us are struggling with, we haven't fully adjusted, maybe our expectations for ourselves were already high and we haven't fully adjusted those down based on what's going on. I saw a great quote on LinkedIn that was like, you're not working from home, you're um, at home during a crisis trying to work. Find a way to give credit to someone else so they feel encouraged to build on their celebrated success, yeah. Provide some help to someone you work with at least once per day and acknowledging that. Cool. Yeah, so this is really everything happens one step at a time, right? And I think sometimes we get stuck with just um, creating such huge expectations, such huge steps that we don't move forward. So easy, easy, easy. And easy, by the way, doesn't necessarily be two minutes or a certain amount of time. It means no emotional resistance. All right, so step three, refactor. First, before I jump into this, what do you guys think of when I say refactor? What does that mean to you? Change, iterate, rebuild, improve, make more efficient. Yeah, make more efficient. Yeah, I always think of it as like, I know it's not, but I kind of think of decluttering my closet where it's like, oh, okay, now I have space to build the wardrobe that I really want because I didn't quite have space there before. So the third step of the Love Monday method is that it's about reworking your foundation so you have capacity to do and be more. It's expanding your comfort zone. And you, you don't always... So it's notice the beliefs that limit you and it's in this order because sometimes you have to take those actions and get out of your comfort zone before you notice what those beliefs are that are that are limiting you that are creating resistance. Um, I feel behind in the chat. Is there anything that I should know about Shauna? Oh, no, it was just me posting something. So no. <laughs> cool. And okay, uh, this quote. Sean posted XP, red, green, refactor, make it a bit better. So kind of along the same vein. Oh, extreme programming, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. It's been a long time since I thought about that phrase. Got it. All right, every person's fears are unique, but the themes of lack and attack are drearily repetitive. Martha Beck says this. And, um, these are just some themes so that you can start to tune into what those limiting beliefs might be for you. When she says lack, she means, you know, a scarcity mindset versus abundance. It's 
I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough energy. Attack is more, um, you know, it's their fault. And so here's kind of the foundation of, of this is my, um, my belief, my formula that drives this whole thing. You start with your thoughts. Um, what was my example I was going to share? Oh, yeah. So earlier this week, I was getting ready for this presentation and I was trying to time something. And I was thinking, I need to hurry up and, and get this timed. And my husband came into the office because, of course, we're sharing the same workspace now. And I thought, he shouldn't be interrupting me. I'm doing this important thing. All right. That was my thought. Your thoughts cause your feelings. So I'm in this emotional state of stress, anxiety, worry, and that causes your actions. So how do you think I reacted when my husband walked in and I'm in this emotional state? I'll just tell you that I probably was like, why are you interrupting me right now when you know that I'm timing this? Like if something like that was super bitchy, super quick, that's what I did. And that those actions are what create your situation. So now I've created this, this conflict between my husband and I, which had nothing to do with him opening the door. Um, it was all about my, my fearful thoughts. And by the way, he was a sweetheart and was like, take a breath. Remember, it should be conversational. <laughs> Thank you, dear. So why is this so important? I could talk for days about how much peace it has brought to my life but um, I'm not going to because I'm keeping this brief. And why it's particularly important when we're talking about career development is what I call expansion. So um, this is really how you allow yourself to be capable of more. I'll give you a, a personal story here. Um, and this is, this is a dramatic example, but it's not an inaccurate example. <clears throat> so, a couple years ago, I had finished my professional life coach training and I had this idea. I was leading a department at Flywheel and I had this idea that I was going to keep coaching on Saturdays and maybe in a year or two, I would be ready to start my business. So I had this coaching conversation with a peer because that's, um, she was in class with me and we would coach each other every week or so. I told her, you know, I'm really stressed out about work. It'd be nice to quit, but I can't quit. I had my husband would be so uncomfortable. He really likes having the stability of the salary. Then I have to make him comfortable. And she's like, "That's interesting. You said you have to make him comfortable." And that was the beginning of me even seeing that that belief was there that was holding me back. And we did some work on it. And within a week or two, I quit that job and felt complete peace about it. Like I said, that's a dramatic example, but. For me, that was kind of the last straw head and all this other work to figure out what I really wanted and to take steps towards it. And that those beliefs about needing to keep people comfortable were still holding me back. So here's my question to you. You thought earlier, you may have shared it, you may not have, but hopefully you thought about some kind of big career goal you have in your life. Why haven't you already achieved it? what comes to mind to you and notice maybe you'll have some lack or attack themed thoughts maybe you have some if then thoughts um some everyone thoughts like you know everyone knows you have to have 10 years of experience under your belt before you could go do this so think for a moment if we were live i would have you do like a whole five minutes of journaling uh, but we'll leave that for another day. Just think for a moment, see what comes to mind and share something in the chat that comes up for you. I'll do the same. I'll try to think of why haven't I already gone on a book tour? Okay, there's resistance, lack of experience. That's a good one. I don't have enough experience. I don't have the social connections. I have too many bills and debts, so little money no time, too busy, needed a break from dealing with PTSD, Oof. comfortable with not rushing things. Mm. Nice work, Shauna. 
Not sure where to start, lack of guidance and support. That's good. And this, this is an interesting, especially with this timing, this comes up a lot. I mean, there's a time to, um, I was just talking to someone recently about the same, you know, not being able to sleep, her cortisol levels are, are spiked, she's in all this stress. And there's a couple approaches there. There's you know, you might be self-creating your stress. And so you can do what we're talking about now and notice and question your thoughts. And it might be just clean pain as it's, as it's called sometimes, just the reality of loss of mourning. And that's a different approach. That's grieving it and being with it and allowing yourself to feel it in your body so that it can move through you. Um, yeah. So both are wonderful places wonderful approaches not sure where to start okay um yeah that's great so does anybody have any questions about anything we've talked about and then we'll jump into small group discussion for a little bit all right i don't see any questions so i'm going to split you out into breakout rooms and um, like I was saying earlier, this is for you. So you can go deeper into those questions of, you know, what's my goal and how do I want to feel? How, what action could I take towards it? And what do I think might be stopping me from moving towards it? Um, or you can just talk about whatever the heck you want to talk about. And um, especially if you're feeling uncomfortable about this, I encourage you to just be easy on yourself and lean into the discomfort because this isn't just about learning or talking with each other. This is every moment is an opportunity to expand your comfort zone. So breakout rooms, assign 11 participants into three rooms. So you're going to be in groups of three to four people. And um, I'm going to do it. I was going to do 10 minutes. That good with people you want to do a little bit shorter anybody have feelings a little shorter we have i have to be somewhere at six i mean <laughs> it's zoom but i still have to be there yeah me too i have to be somewhere perfect so five okay so i'll do five minutes and i'll give you a one minute warning and boom okay have fun. Five All right, so we have three. <laughs> What'd you say, Krista? I said five minutes was way too short. <laughs> yeah, and I accidentally gave you six. No. <laughs> <laughs> we were just getting into it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad it was valuable. So what? Um, I'd love to hear any big takeaways, ahas, anything that these that you guys want to share. I would say goal reassessment and what, um, like, what's important a, a year, five years, three years, whatever it is, um, changes. And uh, clearly, a pandemic definitely shifts that. Cool. Thanks, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. What else? Well, I know for me, some of, my, some of the things I think I want to do are really close to where I'm at right now. And I think, why don't I just avail myself of the opportunities that are there? But you're so stuck in like the immediate needs of that day that you sort of forget that there's this kind of world just outside your door. And I mean, literally, sometimes like it's like the office across the hall that you could actually like be doing something that's more like what you want to do. Hmm. Cool. I think with us, uh, there was two of us who had similar goals, uh, um, three or three of us who are similar goals, try, trying to refactor, trying to look at priorities. Uh, and then one of us you know, trying to figure out what the next step may be in the journey. Cool. All right, so one more little thing and then we'll jump into Q&A. So just to recap, we went through step one plan is really focusing on your feelings, your emotions. 
Step two, iterate is taking easy action. And step three, refactor is noticing and questioning your thoughts. One bonus step, I say this all the time, 100% committed is way easier than 99%. So, so if you can get to that point where you're 100% committed to making whatever your goals are come true, everything is gonna be way easier. And if you are feeling really committed at this point to making some changes to feeling more fulfilled in your career, like I said, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I have a few spots on my calendar for 30 minute one-on-one -on -one calls where I can help you get some more clarity about what it is you really want, what's getting in your way, and what your next steps are. So I'll post the link to that. And with that, what questions do you guys have? It's about two minutes till six, um, and I'll hang on for another 10 minutes or so. How long have you been doing the life coaching and what was the certification process like? Yeah, good question. So I'm just going to post um, those links so you have them. I've been coaching for about two and a half years and I love the program I went through. They're all different, um, but I went through the Martha Beck Institute and it's an eight month virtual program where every week you're on the phone for, I think, a few hours with a small cohort of like 12 people. You're doing reading and and listening and watching and practicing outside of class and then when you get into class um, which is so cool and which is how i help the same way i help organizations build coaching cultures internally is we'd we'd bring a real life problem and we'd play client and someone else would play coach and the rest of the students would observe and be able to so you you know, two weeks into this program, we were coaching and it just broke down so many fears and it was really fun. Cause there is, with coaching, it's not like there's a black and white right answer. Um, and it, yeah, it builds confidence really quick. It's a fun way to learn. Thanks for asking. What other questions? Um, can you give some small, some examples of taking small action? Um, based on your goals? Yeah, do you have a, a goal or something like that in mind? So uh, I guess my goal is kind of um, to figure out what my personal career goals are. I um, started a company a couple years ago with two other colleagues and so it's just been busy day to day, focus on the business, the, the business's goals, but I'd like to step back and figure out what mine are. Cool. Okay. So what is something that you, what's one of your steps towards figuring out your goals? Um, to actually step away from work, I guess, for a little bit and be with my thoughts. Hmm. Okay. So what, um, to what extent can you imagine stepping away from work and being with your thoughts? Like how small does that stepping away need to be for it to feel like, oh yeah, I can do that. I have no resistance. Um, an hour maybe, I don't know. Okay, an hour when? Um, I don't know, the weekends don't really feel like uh, focused on goals time, I, but maybe, maybe my perception is wrong. So anyway, I guess on the, during the weekday, during, when I should be working. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and when you imagine taking an hour tomorrow or Friday out of your work day to just be with your thoughts, how does that feel in your body? Does it feel like no emotional resistance, totally I got it, I'm doing it? Or is there some amount of, I don't know about that. Yeah, like I'd say the total opposite end of the spectrum, like can't even imagine doing that. <laughs> Perfect. This is a great illustration. So that is not an easy action step because we want something that feels like easy. Like it might even be while I'm brushing my teeth tomorrow morning, I'm going to let my thoughts wander to, you know, what my goals could be. Gotcha. An example in my life is um, I mentioned I'm writing this memoir and I was really stuck. Like I, I think it was maybe in the summertime and I had a goal to write 15 minutes a day. I dropped it down to 15 and I talked with a friend about it and then I just couldn't do it. And I was kind of pissed at myself. Like you can't write for 15 minutes, Mandy. And so 
my friend who has published, you know, a dozen books is like, no, two minutes, Mandy, set the timer on your phone. And as soon as it hits two minutes, you have to stop. And so I, I did that. And it was almost like I only got the Word doc, the Google doc open and like started to remember where I was, but then, and then I had to close it. But for me, somehow it really worked. It was like that little bit of a routine. And I think the biggest thing is I just had to get over my shame of that wasn't enough to count. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I was going to say, too, that um, I've tried this approach with working out. So I worked out with the trainer. I've worked out in the gym. I worked out on my own. But the thing that works out the best for me is kind of something like with what Mandy is talking about, where it's just like, let me commit to doing like five burpees today, which I, I really hate them, by the way. But it's something that feels like so tangible and it, it, I'll, there's a sense of accomplishment that comes with it that allows me to continue to move on versus this like overwhelming thing like let me get super fit and do a um iron man or whatever which i'm not even interested in but you know what i mean it's just kind of like taking on a small small goal and then continuing to build on that goal is what i think i'm hearing so that's great thank you yeah i love that too i need to use that i'm i'm stuck fitness wise these days <laughs> Any other questions or thoughts? I just wanted to comment on what, so you said that the writing, so um, we've homeschooled for a couple of years and my kids were both resistant to writing, um, but it may help with the goal thing as well, is well, give yourself a timer and it's called a free write, where it doesn't matter what you write, you just have to write the whole time that you have the timer. So maybe your time would be well spent sort of writing what, what, you know, what do I need to do to step away from my work so that I can feel like I'm personally accomplishing something? Just start writing it down, like set a timer for two or three minutes and just write a note to yourself, basically. Gives you a minute and sort of clears your head a little. Yeah, that's a good idea. As long as I can throw it away afterwards and be like, burn it. This is garbage. <laughs> exactly. Start a fire terrible. with it. <laughs> but then iterate, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Try it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, thank you. I have to drop off. It was great. Yeah, thanks, Kathy. Yeah. Any other comments or questions or? feelings to share so so you took a major like career redirection right going from from a tech industry which is much more focused on you know the technology and often the human factors are put aside and jumped into life coaching and stuff how, how do you make that type of a jump um that's a good question so for me I think it looks very dramatic and maybe it, it was a little bit more gradual because it was, you know, I had the sense of some things that I wanted to do. I wanted to mentor people and coach people. And so I, I worked towards management positions and then that was an aspect of my job. Um, and I like creating things. So I got into product management and then I had direction over the products we were building. So there was some of that. Um, how did I do it? Well, okay, the on, there's, there's the life coaching answer and there's the straight up answer. I have been saving money for a long time. I worked in the software industry. I have a really supportive husband. So from a practical perspective, I was set up there. We're dinks, we don't have kids. I got a dog. Um, and then the really life coachy thing is it really was this questioning my thoughts and figuring out what was stopping me. Cause there, I mean, it was probably, at least three years before I made the jump, I knew that I wanted to coach. I didn't 100% of the time know, but there were moments when I was like, oh, that like, I still tingle thinking about it. It just, it felt so right. It felt like just totally aligned and like it would be so fun. And it was just that gradual process of, okay, Mandy, you can actually do this. Awesome. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Somewhat. 
I also blabbed about it for 45 minutes on a podcast. If you want to go to our website and see that link. Okay. You should share that. Yeah, share that. Mm -hmm. Cool. If you get the workbook, it's in the same email you get. Otherwise, I can, I'll put it in the um, meet of two. Hello, Olivia, I think. Is that right? Amelia. 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 <laughs> I knew it was vowel consonant. <laughs> I get points for that. Mandy, <laughs> you know what I love is your uh, confidence because I'm very confident with names. I'm like, I know your name's Tina or whatever, and it's never right. <laughs> I just have to get used to this because I'm pretty good with faces. Wait, I'm pretty good with names. Actually, it, it kind of feels reverse. I am pretty good with names and I'm not good with faces. So I also live a life where people come up and talk to me and I I just have to be like, I'm sorry, yeah. how do I know you? Or just pretend you know them. That's what I do. Smile and wave, boy. Smile and wave. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. This was fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Connor. Thank you, Mandy. You bet. Thanks, everybody, for joining Thank us you. tonight. Have Thank a good you, time. Time. Thank you. Great job. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Ditto. Bye, guys.